and uh, peace of Christ to all of you. I'm sure nobody missed me, and this is why I'm not coming uh, every day. I mean, we made a video. I mean, not many people saw it. I don't know why. Maybe you guys are not uh, too much interested no more. So maybe I will slow down in making videos as long people don't care, you know. Uh, you know, like I have, I don't know how many tens of thousands of videos explaining the cult of Islam. Maybe I did too much. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you decide. We will see how many of you will have this video and then we will see how soon we will go back and go live. If it is good number, we will go tomorrow. If not, uh, we will wait. So, um, today our topic is about Omar ibn al-Khattab. Very nice person. He is the most justice caliphate in the history of Allah. If you go in uh, in uh, a prophet YouTube, peace upon him, you will find thousands of videos about Hazrat Umar. You know, one of the, one of the funny things about uh, Muslims from like uh, uh, Asia, they say Hazrat Umar. What Hazrat mean? <laughs> Hazrat Umar. <laughs> That's uh, that's remind me of a guy. His name is a Christian prince when he's trying to read the word abandonment. About, about what what about about the about, uh, okay. Hazrat Omar. Hazrat Omar. Who is Hazrat Omar? So guys, there is a guy. His name is Omar. He was a caliphate. He is amazing. He is amazing in justice. Look how many videos. The justice of the caliphate of Omar bin Al Khattab. I don't know what to tell you about all of them. You know, I mean, he's it, so just. I will give you an example about his just. And then we will go to the major topic, which is uh, teaching the Quran. You know? Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, we spoke before about the breastfeeding for adult. You remember the breastfeeding for adult? When Muhammad, he ordered women, uh, you know, uh, uh, to do breastfeeding uh, for adult person. And actually, uh, 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 a Muslim kid from uh, YouTube, uh, lately he said uh, to somebody, um, can I do, you know, succor you? Uh, you know, when we Christians, if we say that, the Muslim, they will say, uh, you are a sexual predator. If they say that, it's okay. <laughs> So just to remind you, refresh your brain. Uh, here and here we have in the, this uh, Twitter, we have a Muslim kid, his name is Mimi. And he was arguing with the other Muslims about the Prophet ordering Muslim women. Is it all women they have to do that or only one woman? So uh, the Prophet clearly, he said to a woman, and uh, you know, give your boobs to a stranger to suck it. And, uh, you know, the Muslims until now, they are fighting over this topic. And those who they are ashamed of it, they try to say only for that woman, which is stupid anyway. I mean, it doesn't make any difference anyway. I mean, and Allah, he made a verse in the Quran just for the breast of that woman. Only for that woman. <laughs> Why? She is, she is different to a human being. What about the rest of women? <laughs> so women in the Muslim, they are fighting over it. And, you know, things is getting really weird and ugly. But let me show you a story, how much impact this story have in the Muslim society, which is, you know, uh, widely corrupted. Here we have a story about a man. Uh, let us see, hold, hold on, not this hadith. Uh, yeah, this one. A man, he wanted to have a new wife. And you know, Muslims, they like to change their cars, you know, like I mean, he's bored. I mean, the same wife for two months, three months. Yeah, she's getting older. <laughs> Hello. So, yeah, he are related to uh, from from Malik from 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 from. A man came to Abdullah ibn Umar. You know, uh, this is Abdullah ibn Umar. Uh, when I was with him at the place of where the judgment were given, and asked him about succoring. An older person, Abdullah ibn Umar, replied, a man come to Umar ibn al-Khattab. So now Umar al-Khattab is involved. So the first Umar here is not the second Umar. So Umar al-Khattab now is here. And he said, I have a slave girl, and I used to do boom boom with her. He used to do what? 
boom boom you know muslims they, they you know if you work for them as a if you are a slave they don't rape slaves no yeah they just boom boom that's not that's not right and then uh my wife went to her and suckled her <laughs> So it's not only women suckling women suckling men in Islam. Now we have a new version of it. Women, she is suckling a woman. Both are mature adult women. So the wife of the master, she came to the slave. She said, "Little honey, come here, come here. Take my breast. Hey, what you, what do I do with your breast? Suckle it, or I will beat you. Okay, suckle it right now." I grab my nipples you know actually this is why they you see i think in islam in muhammad he understand the importance of nipples like nipples you know i think he was finding a bills for like a solution you know like it's a drugs you know nip nipples nipples i think this is where the word came in from i'm just trying to analyze that you know the the english you know english is it's, you know english is my uh, first uh, you know uh, uh, I mean, study. I mean, like, I mean, very a genius in English. So she ordered the women to suckle her. So she will become a family. And then her husband, he cannot do boom boom with her. <laughs> so if there is a woman, she is a lesbian. And she is having, uh, you know, she, let us say your wife, she turned into a lesbian. That's mean all the women she had boom, boom with them, they are her sisters. <laughs> so anyway, the story did not over here. When I went to the girl, my wife told me, watch out, because she had suckled her. Mm -hmm. So he went to sleep with the girl as usual, you know. They told him, oh, hold on, you cannot do that, no. Your wife, she suckled her. Really? Yeah, she suckled her. So the man, he went to Umar al-Khattab. Umar, he told him, beat your wife and go to your slave girl and do boom, boom. Because suckling is approved only for the one, like which means make relationship forbidden only for the young okay question muslims if it only make relationship for the young so why muhammad he ordered the old women to suckle the, the, the adult man <laughs> but here you notice the, the wise uh, Umar al-Khattab he ordered him to do the right thing beat your wife he did not say your wife is wrong don't listen to her she doesn't understand what she is doing you know Tell her that the caliphate told you don't do that again this is wrong no go beat her i mean do you see how much justice he is let us say for the sake of argument this woman she got the stupid idea of muhammad wrong but i don't blame her i mean muhammad he is the one who come with this an adult woman being ordered to feed the breastfeeding for adult man so how come an adult man is okay but women is not I mean, isn't it weird? Yeah, but this is the funny Muhammad making, creating law and order in the society. But here Omar, he decided to make his own judgment. So go and beat your wife. Anyway, you can find this hadith in many, in many sources. And this is the reference. Maybe the admin can post the link for you. And here it says 30 suckling. And you know the Muslim, the funny, the Muslim, they try to, to, to solve this problem. They say, no, 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 it's not suckling. The women, she take milk, she put it in the cup. Have you ever heard of a cup suckling? It says suckling, you idiot. I mean, which language you speak? So if it is from the cup, it's called drinking. Suckling is coming from two, let us say, let us, let us, uh, let us uh, divide it. Suck. Lean, suck, 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 you know, suck. Not a drinking. Unbelievable. 
and you will see the Muslims in the comment, the Muhammadan, they start saying, first of all, this is about a woman, she put milk, first of all, the women, she don't have kids to have milk, what milk? The woman, she's an adult woman, adult, she's old, she don't have a child, you know, do you think the women, she have milk, anytime you open the faucet, there's milk will come? What do you think, the women, she have a tank in her breast? Anytime you open the nipples, the faucet open and the milk come, women, they have milk when they have a baby. Even goats. Unbelievable. So Umar, he ordered him to beat her. That is the solve the problem, that's it. And go and have sex with your slave. But there's another story. And this story involved teaching the Quran. I want to show you the best way to explain the Quran to somebody. You know how many times we show the Muslims uh, interpretation and the Muslims don't want to listen and say, you're a liar. They keep saying you're a liar. You're a liar. So always you have to be productive in order to teach Muslims Quran. Okay, so I decided to open a school like this so the Muslims maybe will listen to me. I mean, I, I show them the reference, I show them Ibn Kathir, I show them Al Qurtubi, I show them Al Tabari, I show them the Hadith. They keep saying to me, liar. So I'm thinking maybe this is the way to work. Actually, I'm convinced. There's a man, he came to the Caliphate Omar. The Caliphate Omar. He is the person who Muhammad, he said, if there is a messenger will come after me, it's going to be Omar. Actually, Omar, he created a lot of Quran. Even the Hadith says that Omar, he said that Allah, he agreed with me with many things. And then Allah, he revealed the verses as I said, which mean exactly. Hmm. Over 500 hadith are found narrated by Umar ibn Khattab. As well, at least maybe some scholars have said up to a dozen verses were revealed because of something Umar said. Because of Did you hear it? Did you hear it? At least a dozen of verses in the Quran revealed, starting from the Kaaba, praying the Kaaba. Why Muslim they pray in the Kaaba? Because Umar said so. Why Muslim women they wear hijab? Because Umar was spying at the wife of Muhammad and he said to her when she was doing poo poo, we, we know we recognize you, Sauda. So at least a dozens of verses in the Quran revealed because of Umar. Umar. That occurred as a result of Umar. Incidents from the Sirah and a hadith and verses from the Quran that occurred as a result of Umar ibn Khattab. Because the persona of Umar ibn Khattab is so important and interesting that a number of verses of the Quran were revealed because of him. And Can you believe it? Allah will not reveal those verses, but Umar, he caused those verses to be revealed. That's deep. Now the verses are revealed by Umar, and now somebody is coming to Umar asking him a question. <laughs> You know they have a they have a website that's called Ask the Ask the Scholar or Ask a Sheikh. <laughs> this poor Muslim he decided to ask the Sheikh, but in this time the biggest Sheikh ever, Omar ibn Khattab. 
Tafsir al-Qurtubi, the chapter of Al Umran. What this chapter is saying? Let us see what it says in English first, so people can understand what we are talking about. Uh, <clears throat> he came to him, asking him about verses in the Quran. Not necessarily this verse, but this verse supposedly is going to tell you what you know what the situation is. So, in chapter three, verse number seven. The Quran maker, Aka Umar, Aka Muhammad, Aka I don't know who, Aka everybody in the in the business of making verses. In this chapter here, let us find a shorter you know translation. This guy he keep adding brackets and when I mean, you see how how clear the Quran you need to add the bracket every two words. Okay, so Allah He sent the book. He sent it one. He sent it down. Why? Because it was up. Hello. Okay. And in there, in there, there is in, in them there is verses who they are found mentors, okay. And there is there is there is verses who they are fishy, which mean Muslims do not know what they mean. And those fishy verses Is made for the one who have a problem in their heart, the, the bad one, you know. <laughs> and look at this stupid explanation. Because if those verses are made for the bad one who have a bad things in their heart, what about the good one? What they would do with them? I mean, isn't it the one who listen Quran or read Quran is the good one? And why Allah making bad one in the Quran? Are you saying there's a bad verses in the Quran? So those verses, brother, those who have a disease in their heart, they follow them. Like, what the heck? So if you follow Quran, you have a disease in your heart? And when you follow them, you are seeking discord and searching for its hiding meaning. Do you see what make you bad? What make a Muslim a bad Muslim according to this verse? If you are seeking discord and searching for it is hide meaning you are a bad Muslim. You have a disease in your heart. Can you believe it? How in the world you say to somebody he want to learn what Allah is saying? He want to understand what this God is saying. Aka Muhammad. You say to him that if you are trying to find the hiding meaning of it, you are a sick person. So now what happened? A guy, he came to Umar ibn al-Khattab, the caliphate. And this is Tafsir al-Qurtubi, page number 11, variant number 4. And I will post the link for everybody, so you can go and uh, save it in your reference. Let me do it, hold on. <coughs> I hope the link is appearing for you. So anyway, a man, he came to Muhammad. Sorry, to uh, Omar. And you know, we showed you how Omar, he ordered the man to go and beat his wife because she suckled different women. This is how Omar, he correct people. You know, he beat you up. You are wrong. You don't say it. He beat you. So the man, he came to Omar al-Khattab asking questions i mean what what is wrong is doing he's asking the wrong person obviously he's asking a criminal so in the hadith here it says let us go to it and i will put the translation of the prophet google peace upon him oh hold on <clears throat> All right. When you translate in Google translation for this page, search where it says in the side the fourth or number four. Fourth. 
Now for sure translation will appear in your side in the left side of the page because in Arabic we read it from right to left. So a man, his name is Omar. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, a name is uh, his name is uh, uh, I think. Uh, let us see. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Subay. His name is Subay. Uh, Subay Subay ibn Asal, which means the son of honey. He came to the city of Medina. And he started asking about verses which is not clear in the Quran, mutashabih al Quran. And he asked about other things. And then Omar, he heard about him. He heard what? He heard there is a guy, he's asking questions. What he's doing? He is committing unforgettable crime. He's asking questions about the Quran. So Omar, he heard that. So Omar, he sent. He sent his soldiers to bring him, to arrest him. And he prepared for him Arajin, you know, Arajin, you know, you know, you know, the, the, the long branch of the palm tree, the one it hold the fruit, which is very, very strong. This is why it can hold all those heavy fruits, you know, like it can hold, I think, up to maybe uh, 30 pounds of weight or even more. So he prepared for him. You see, he want to teach him. Omar, he want to answer the questions. <laughs> so he prepared for him all those branches. And then he start beating him. And he hit his head, brother. And he made him bleed. And he made two pieces of it. Allahu Akbar. And he continued beating him and beating him and beating him until the blood came on his face and then the man he said please please oh the 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 caliphate the you know the prince of the believers uh you know uh, you know i i swear by allah all the questions are gone from my head <laughs> For sure, all the questions are gone. Are you kidding me? All of them are gone. And let us do now a Google translation. So, uh, you know, and as you see, this is your Islamic website. By the way, you can show you reference in many books, not only this one. So again, let us do Google translation. Okay, in the front of your eyes. <clears throat> Remember carefully that you have to use Google browser in order to use the translation option in Google. So here it says four, you see? Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, no, this is 14, what is four? It should be fourth. Uh, where is the fourth thing? It should be appearing four. <clears throat> Maybe we can do something better. Search for the word head. Head, okay. Uh. <clears throat> hmm. Let us see, okay. Where is the translation? Okay, let's see more head. Uh huh. Okay, so the story here appear here. So okay, you see here this it says the fourth. You know, you see the sign here in the in the. I don't know if you can see it from your side. Let me zoom in. It's just to find to to make it easier for you when you use Google Translation. You know how you can find it. You see that? Okay. Uh, it says here, Abu Bakr, uh, etc., blah, 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 Imam of Procedure, blah, 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 saying, uh, 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 punished somebody asking about interpretation of the Quran. The verses have a problem, interpretation. 
because if the questioner want to ask him blah 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 I mean what happened here uh, okay hold on the page is jumping hmm. where is the thing again all right so we have to go back so anyway this is the, the story here you can read it in google translation so the man he asked questions and omar he heard uh, about this guy asking questions and obviously he heard about him for a reason nobody can answer you know what I mean? I mean, imagine you are a caliphate and you have uh, well, Omar, he is a person who was occupying countries, sending thousands and thousands of troops uh, to kill people around the, you know, the, the, the area, raping Christians, killing the Jews, uh, uh, conquering Jerusalem. I mean, this guy is so busy, right? Huh? You know, he's busy with his slaves, beating slaves, raping slaves. And now he heard that there's a guy He's asking questions about the Quran, and obviously his questions nobody can answer. So the news reached to Omar. So when this man he start asking questions about the Quran, and those questions they will cause problems. You see, Omar, he did not bring the guy, says, okay, let me explain to you. There's no problem. This is easy. And this guy is a Muslim. The guy is not a Christian. He's not a Jew. He's not a Hindu. He's not a Buddha. He's not an atheist. He is a Muhammadan. He kissed the black stone. Mwah! And he believed the black stone can forgive his sin. He is a total 100% pagan. So instead of answering him, because Omar himself, he had no answer. He brought the guy and he decided to teach him a lesson. So Omar says here, he brought him and he prepared for him two big branches of palm tree. He prepared it for him. You see, he knew exactly what he would do to him before he bring him. He did not bring the guy to ask him, okay, what you said, what you were saying. He did not even ask him anything. He just start beating the hell of him. Omar, he said to him, who are you? The guy, he said his name. And then Omar, he hit him in his head. You see, translation here is not really good. And he made a hole in it and kept beating him. And the blood was covering his face. And then the guy, he, he told Omar, this is sufficient. <laughs> this is sufficient. I understand now. <laughs> Now I understand the Quran very well. Thank you, Caliphate. I understand. Honest to Allah, I understand. I understand very well. I mean, what's wrong with people? Why they don't understand that this is a true religion? And the funny, the Muslim, they say that this is the Caliphate of Justice. He's what? He's the Caliphate of Justice. Even they have articles about him. Actually, this is one of the articles. Let me show you how stupid those articles are. Omar al Khattab wearing hijab is obligation for the free and believe in women. Uh -huh. A slave woman, she decided to wear the hijab. Omar, she was serving Omar in his house. You know, they own tons of slaves. Very good society. And they say to the black African, Islam came to free the slave brother. You can search on Google about something called the revolution of the Zinj, Z-I-N-G, where the city of Al-Basra in Iraq, the population of the black people became three to four or five times more than the white Arab. Why? Because they brought them as a slaves, captured them from Africa, and forced them into slavery just to feed them. The Muslims don't work. The Muslims just sit home, have sex. So this woman, she is a slave in the house of the most admired justice caliphate in the history of Allah. A female slave once entered upon Omar and al-Khattab. Allah pleased with him. You see the Muslim, they say Allah pleased with him. I mean, for sure he will be pleased with him. 
I mean, look, if you don't believe me, look what he did. For sure, Allah will be pleased with him. And then he recognized her having been owned by some of the Muhajirin. He noticed that she is a, she is a slave. We own her. But she was wearing hijab, covering her head with it. So what's the problem with that? Don't Muslim they say Islam teach decency, blah blah, and hijab is decency? Like we cover the head, but we give you our nipples. So he asked her, "Have you been freed? Like, did we give you freedom?" She said, "No." <laughs> so he said, "Then why you are wearing hijab?" <laughs> Remove it from your head. And then he said, hijab only to be worn as a duty for a free woman and the believers. And then Omar, he did not stop. The woman, she hesitated to take the hijab. She slowed down to take it off. So Omar, he raised up. He was talking to her when he was sitting, sitting down. And he hit her in her head until she cast the hijab from her head. Now, do you understand why they say Allah pleased with him? Do you see it? Obviously, Allah is pleased with Omar. Hijab is only for free women, slave women. She show, actually, if you have my book, actually, you will find that, you know, the women, they have to show their breasts not only not to wear hijab, they have to go and they are topless. And then the Muslim, they will say to you, you are lying. <laughs> you are lying. <laughs> so, who can explain the Quran to us? If we ask Omar, he will beat the hell of you. Nobody. That is the answer. And this is why Allah is pleased with Omar. Because when somebody asks a question about the Quran, he beat him. He is the one who understands Islam very well. Chapter 5, verse 101, it says, ask no questions. Verse 102, it says, because former generation asked the same questions before you. And that make them leave Islam. The Muslim they say about this verse, oh, this is about asking silly verse, silly questions. If there is something called silly for God, I mean, if if we don't ask God, Prophet, we ask who? Let us say it is silly. The wise man still he can answer the silly question. You don't say don't ask questions. And who is the silly here? Who decide who is silly? Well, isn't it silly that there's a verse in the Quran that says there's a king, his name is Solomon, he died and he was standing over a stake for one year and nobody noticed him? Who is the silly here? So let us say this is a verse very clear. Okay, I want to ask you a question, Muhammad. How the man, he died and he's standing for a year over a stake and nobody noticed? This is a silly question. If you remember the question when a guy he asked Ibn Abbas, I don't know if the admins have the link, they can post it. They asked Ibn Abbas about the hoodhood. You remember the chapter speaking about hoodhood? Hoodhood is a bird who is specialty to find women who have no hair in their legs and water. He's like a satellite, brother. So, uh, when somebody asked Ibn Abbas, who Muhammad referred to him to explain the Quran, he said to him, well, if the hidhood can do that, how come if we put some seed and we cover the trap around the seed by dust, he don't see it and we trap him and we capture him? Ibn Abbas, he said, don't ask that again, okay? He threatened him. The guy, he said, I swear by Allah, I will never do that again. <laughs> I mean, look how this guy, he got him busted. He just said to the Ibn Abbas, 
Well, if the, the spirit can see things which we cannot see, how come if we cover the seeds, if we cover the trap and put some seed around it, then this bird, he act stupid and he come and he step on it and we capture him. You see guys how smart the question is? Very smart question. This guy is a better one, yes. But he's smart. If this bird can see what we cannot see, how come we can capture him by just some silly seeds? According to Ibn Kathir, this bird is an engineer. Can you believe it? Let me see if I can find that in, in, in Ibn Kathir in English so we can laugh. But I'm sure they will take it off. They don't keep it, you know, they don't, they take everything off. Chapter 27, verse number 20. <clears throat> he's an engineer, brother. I mean, like, he's what? He's an engineer. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, brother, he is an engineer, brother. I mean, this bird is an engineer. Yes, brother. Okay. Let us see if the translation here says that. <clears throat> okay. Ibn Abbas and other that the Hub Hub was expert who used to show Suleiman where the water was if he was out in the open open land and needed water the hoopoe the hoopoe uh, the hoopoe uh, uh, would look for water for him okay and he go in different locations but let's see why it says it engineer does it say engineer i don't see it until now yeah it doesn't say that here i mean what happened this is a mika theory if we go to Ibn Kathir in Arabic, we will find it says he's an engineer. Actually, uh, all the stories disappear. Look, look, guys, let's just to show you the corruption of this religion. This is, let me give you this link. This is Ibn Kathir in Arabic. This is what? Ibn Kathir in Arabic. This is the link. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Open it, please. And this is Ibn Kathir in English. You can use right now Google translation for the page I just gave you and compare it with this with the page in English, which must then they post for us. You will find the story is gone. Disappear. It's totally gone. In this here, let us show you. We will read it first in English. So we can laugh together. Uh, the Hudhud, he was an engineer. <laughs> it says here, Kana al Hudhudu Muhandisan. Where it says that in the English translation, it's gone. They took it off. They said he was an expert. What expert? It says here, Muhandisan. And then they continue saying, a person whose name is Nafa, and now you will not see this story in the English translation. Where the story about Nafa? Anyone see it? Let me know if you can see it. Uh, here, hold on, hold on. Actually, we found it. We found it. But the 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 the, the word engineer, the the statement of engineer is not there in English. Now we found here the rest of the story. Hold on. It says. Uh, and among the people was a man from Al Khawarij, who his name is was Nafi ibn al Azraq, who often used to raise objections. 
This guy is smart. He don't want to be a dummy. <laughs> he raised objection to what Ibn Abbas is saying. But remember, Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad, and he is the one, the only one actually, Muhammad, he said he can explain the Quran for you. He prayed to Allah to make him the, the, the ink of the scholars. So if you Muslim, you say he's wrong, that's mean Allah, Prophet, prayer was stupid. Did not work. He said to him, stop Ibn Abbas. Stop Ibn Abbas. You will be defeated in argument today. Uh-oh. Do you see it? Guys, do you see it? I can't believe it. Even the Muslim, they keep that in the translation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> today, Ibn Abbas, you will be defeated with your stupid lies and Muhammad lies. Ibn Abbas says, why Nafa? He said, huh, you are telling us that this bird can see the water beneath the ground, but any boy can put seed on a trap and cover cover the trap with dirt, and then the bird will be, you know, uh, will take the seed and the boy can catch him. Do you see it? You see how Muhammad proven to be a liar in the time of Muhammad? Do you see it? How this bird can see the water? He can see things nobody can see, but a little boy can trap him and put seeds and then cover it, cover the trap by dirt, and then we capture the bird. This is a very legitimate question, correct? Proving that Muhammad is a scam. Now, how Ibn Abbas answered this different story? Listen how Ibn Abbas answered, the same as, as Omar. Look what he said to him. Ibn Abbas, he said, if it was not for the fact that this man would go tell others that he had defeated Ibn Abbas' argument, I would never even answer. Then he said to Nafi, we to you, when the decree strike a person, his eyes become blind and he loses all cushions. Look, what the heck? He cursed him. Supposedly now Ibn Abbas, he refuted the guy. Look, look, he said, he said, Ibn Abbas said, Ibn Abbas said, if it was not for the fact that this man would go and tell others that he defeated Ibn Abbas, argument, I would never answer him. So now he's I'm going to answer. You see, he's not going to let him go without answer. The answer is coming. So he said to him, I curse you. I curse you when the punishment of Allah come on you. This is the answer. And then the man, he said, he got scared. He said, uh, by Allah, I will never dispute with you any concern about the Quran. <laughs> you will never do what? You will never dispute with you about anything in the Quran no more. Because he cursed him. So if a Muslim now he want to dispute with me, I curse him. He will say, I never dispute with you, Christian Prince. You must be saying the truth. Umar al Khattab, he had different method. He beat the guy. This guy here, Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, he cursed the guy. It worked. Both of them, the questions are gone from their head. The first one, the questions are gone from his head because he was bleeding and the blood is covering all his face and he lost his mind. That's it. This is sufficient, uh, Caliphate. I'm done, I'm done. All the questions are answered already. No? Yeah, he did beat the hell of him. And now this guy is asking a very simple question, proving that not only Ibn Abbas is a stupid, but the one, the founder of the Quran, is just collecting fairy tale stories and adopting them, make them religion. You know, actually, I don't know, like, I don't like to share uh, personal information with you. Yesterday I was sitting and this bird, he came to me and he told me uh, that there is a, a water in your yard. And now after I finish with you, I'm going to go and dig for water. Mm hmm. And he can find you, what is make it more funny, he can find women who have no hair in their legs. 
it's our dream finally to find women with this is the bird by the way if you do not know the bird we are talking about and look by the way he is a commander he's like a general you know and actually i think i think the idea of this bird is being a general because he looked like a roman soldier somehow i mean subhanallah i mean look think about it let me open the, uh, 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 a big sir for you subhanallah brother subhanallah what is this is a twitter what we have to do with the twitter come on okay hold on So the naive ones, you know, the naive ones, starting from Muhammad, the idiot, he was trying to find a, like a story about this guy. People, they say that this guy is a command between the birds. He's a command, you know, this is why he had like the Roman soldiers, they have those feathers in the top of their head. Well, obviously, hello. Allah did not create this bird for nothing. Created him for a reason. He's the minister of irrigation. Actually, yeah, in the tafsir says he's the minister of irrigation. He's a minister. I don't know, somehow he looked like Trump for me. Is that the hair of a Trump? Like, this guy is the minister of irrigation and he is an engineer and he is like, what? Guys, Islam is a true religion. Just be honest with yourself. Actually, I see a very strong connection between this bird and Trump. Look, both of them they are blonde, and both of them they have their hair like you know going up like in the you know in the wrong direction. You know, like al al Subhanallah. Maybe they are twin or something. What is the connection? I wonder. Me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> all right we will stop here and guys if you like me to come back soon then you we have to have a good view in those videos otherwise if i see that you nobody care really you know for me i'm sick of this garbage honestly i'm sick of islam i want to take i wish i can take a break for years not only a few months but if you want me to come back then share the videos let me see how many people are seeing that people want to see more learn more as you see here you know we are sharing with you knowledge which is very hard for you to find by yourself and even if you speak let us say i mean those who speak arabic still they cannot understand the stupid book as you see so what about you who do not know a word in arabic so here you can learn here you can laugh here you can enjoy and here you can remember because the reason I make you, I make it like a, you know, a comedy thing, right? It's a comedy anyway, but because I want you to remember those things in your head. So a years from now, you will be laughing at what we just said. Download my videos, share it with your friends, teach your children so nobody can fool them and lie to them, saying to them that Islam is a religion. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a cartoon. Islam is a mockery. It's a mockery in the man of a human being. Have you ever heard of a God who wanna give you women with big boobs if I believe in him? What kind of God this God is? And what if I like small boobs? Alhamdulillah. All men, they like big boobs, brother? Like not a single man in between the Muslims, he would like to have a woman with small boobs. What if there's a guy, he don't like them big? Christian Prince, believe in me, I'm Prophet Muhammad. And if you believe in me, brother, I will give you women with big boobs. Hey, are you serious, Muhammad? Booby booby? Yes. I mean, do you promise me? I swear by Allah. Okay, why we can why we cannot get the big boobs now? I mean, I, I will go to heaven waiting for what? What can we get them now? Sorry, we don't need to do, do mail delivery. 
You have to wait until you go to heaven, brother. <laughs> Yeah, and this is very spiritual religion, by the way. The, the spiritual religion of Islam come with boobs and nipples. I mean, what is more spiritual than big boobs? Think about it. You see the big boobs, you remember Allah. You touch them, you go crazy for Allah. You hold them, Allah will be boiling. You... Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to go farther. I will stop here. <laughs> big boobs, big boobs. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when Muhammad come for you? Big boobs, big boobs. I mean, what is that, man? This is this is logic. And look, in this heaven, brother, there's garden. And how garden can be without big boobs? I mean, look, the connection. Look, the connection. You know, there's a connection. There's a strong connection. Big boobs and garden and grape. <laughs> Deep. I mean, now we are in the garden, and now we have a grape. What is missing? Big boobs, big boobs. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, Muhammad, coming for you? Big Unbelievable. So beautiful. I don't know how many of those men who they are listening to this, they are going to convert to Islam immediately. Immediately. I mean, English is funny, by the way. Shouldn't they say immediate uh, boobs, li? I mean, immediate li. Sound like Chinese for me. Li, you know, they, they see the ad in the word li. See, here we go. We found just an English word to start from the Chinese. So, uh, I'm really astonished, to be honest with you. We have to be honest here. All right, time to go, otherwise we will stay for the coming 10 hours. Don't forget to share the video, so let us have a good view, so we can come back live again. If we see a good number of people saw the videos, you know, by tomorrow, I will be back tomorrow. If not, uh, the day after, the day after, who cares? I mean, I'm going to be busy dreaming about the big, uh, you know, those beautiful things of the grape, and you know. <laughs> I love it, I love it. I cannot wait to be a prophet, you know. I don't, you know. Uh, I cannot wait to be to go to heaven, you know. And women, brother, there they are virgin. And each time you sleep with them, they are virgin again. Look at this trick. I mean, do you see the amazing technology? I mean, you just step with the women, and now she lost her virginity, brother. The second you are done, I'm not going to go in details. She is virgin again. That's deep. Hey, brother, but what the point? I mean, I just stepped with her. She's not a virgin no more. Hey, brother, don't discuss this with Allah. Allah, he will make her virgin. And if we ask and Nayak, he will say, Great and truth. First of all, you are stupid. Because you can understand the mercy of Allah. Hey, Zach and Nayak, what is the mercy? The women, she will be in pain again. I mean, why you want to make her lose virginity a billion times? What is the point? You just step with her. She is the same woman. Nothing changed. Great and truth. First of all, Allah is all merciful. Zach and I, what does this have to do with merciful and merciful? I'm asking you, what is the point? This is a cheating. You just did sleep with the women. So why you are making a version again? Great Prince. First of all, give me your name. Tell me where you live. Tell me your faith. Zach and Naik, Muslim, they are posted pictures saying, This is me. What's wrong with you? And they are saying, Even they know my name. What's wrong? Zach, come on, give me the answer. Christian Prince, they have a fake name. Give me your name, I will answer you. Okay, Zachary Naik, what this have to do? Okay, I have, uh, my name is uh, 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 Donald Trump. Christian Prince, you think I'm stupid? <laughs> you are the Donald Trump. <laughs> This is how they answer and this is how they refute. Omar al Khattab, he beat the guy because he's asking question. Ibn Abbas, he cursed the guy because he's asking question. And Muslim, they try, you know, they because they have no answer, they threat you if you ask question. Because Islam obviously is very solid religion, not a cult. Thank you very much for being here. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is a joke. And we prove it to you every day. See you soon.
Thank you.